So, you know, working on the why, take some time, <clears throat> trial and error, stumble. It's just like going out to play golf, especially tournament golf. I mean, you just you keep learning every time you're out there on the golf course teaching this the same way. I'm going to get to that as I get through this book. This, there's two books we, we studied and we, we talk about and the learnings of them. This is one of them. It's called Love Marks. I do want to say Love Marks because it just flows a little better. I won't go there. And taking the why, building on that with the learnings from Love Marks, this book, as far as emotional connections, Simon mentioned it. And Kevin Roberts, the CEO who wrote this book uh, from Saatchi to Saatchi, he talks about emotions lead to decisions. And so these big companies are doing lots of ads, lots of tugging on the emotional heartstrings to get you to buy things. So as an industry, we're usually slower to catch up. This book, a lot of good golf books. I'm sure from a teaching standpoint, you've got Hogan's book or maybe Dave Kell's book. And, so on and so on in different videos, not into like <coughs> being a salesperson per se, but give some thought into this as a stocking stuffer to yourself. Now, I used to say, it, the list price here is $27.50. You're gonna get so much out of this, well worth it. Our brothers and sisters in Kentucky illuminated me last week to when I said love marks, gentleman in the back, I see him get on his phone, and at the break, he said, I found this book for 99 cents. Go to Overstock something, something, something. Well, right after the lunch break, another PG member said, I'm not lying. I found the book for one penny. <laughs> Go to this website. <laughs> so it's pretty darn cheap now, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is prices. This is, this is my book. I'll pass it around. But there's some great information in there. And one of the big things we take from this, there's the uh, emotions lead down. I lived this last Saturday because my wife was at a wit's end with all our kids and cars and short of this and that. She's like, I'm getting a car today. I said, whoa, easy. <laughs> so we ended up going, it's a place called offlease.com. It was a, my radar is always up. We go through the whole day, but basically, the emotions led to decisions in this car buying. I'll leave it at that. Um, it, was a, it was a wonderful day with my lovely bride. But anyways, um, so there's some really neat findings in this book. And I've got some different things I go back to a lot. And um, the this is one of the biggest things in here. It's this axis of how do we all strive? How do we work? How do we aspire? <coughs> So people love mark in your facility. This is another one where we could do a half a day on this thing. One of the cool things in here as well was Kevin Roberts and in, in his information that to become a love mark, and, and with that it ties in a lot, a lot of different elements. And one of them is looking at things different. And he calls it the edge culture. And when you get out on the edge and you see things a lot different. Not the first time I've done that. I'm a trained professional. I'll just try to go in the room wherever I can go. Behind curtains, you name it. But I want to drive home a visual and an important point. That if you're right in the middle, you can't see the edge, you don't see the new things. It's very comfortable here in the middle, and I get it, and not everybody's gonna be, wanting to be fearless and get to the edge and look at things different. The industry is very, very traditional. We talked about that. We talked about with Bob at your facility, tough to change mindsets, tough to change culture. I get that, I lived it. But in the middle, and I'm super respectful if you don't wanna be on the edge, that's okay. But in the middle, it's safe, it's not very innovative, it's not very ambitious, it's just you're safe in the middle and that's cool. But the more you can get to the edge, you get a better view of things and you can get innovative and you can get leading edge on things. 
So if you're comfortable in the middle, I respect you. More, more of us can get to the outer edge. Simon talked about it, early adopters, innovators. I see you sitting here as early adopters, innovators on the workshop. A lot of PGA members wouldn't want to be here. I'm sure they would have thought, oh, they're just going to jam another freaking program down my throat. Don't worry, it's <coughs> the training professional. Michael was safe. And, you know, I don't, I don't want to do these programs. Well, there's no program, as I mentioned. So, you can take what's learned today and all this information. I'm going to be helping you anywhere I can. Take a peek at this book. Really exceptional book. There's also some neat stuff in here. Do you realize in an average day right now, we make more decisions than the caveman made in their life? Do you not think you get that in a PGA workshop, right? I'll pass it around. Pretty cool. Hey, Bob, you know, you, gotta, you may be <coughs> a celebrity one day and it's just may come in useful. <coughs> so for this, love marks. A key element out of this book. You get you want to aspire to this high love, high respect. If we're down on the product, that's when, as an example, and I've seen it happen to my friends, I know you've had your friends at your facility, for whatever reason in the world, it's just grinds my head pro. And he ends up just being a product. And contracts up, this and that's happening. And you know, I know this guy down the street, Michael, I can get him cheaper. So boom, new, new head pro. That's the way I first looked at this thing and the way it hit me. If you're a product, low love, low respect. You know, certainly fads come and go. <coughs> if you're a brand, you know, that's, that's okay. There's solid brands out there. But the idea would be at your facility with whatever you're doing in your life, if you have the highest love and highest respect, you're going to pretty much control your own destiny, I would think. And I don't think any club wants to lose you. They want to retain you. High love, high respect. Now, the word love is not used a lot in the business sense. Love is used a lot in this book on love marks. Again, it's, it's, there's lots of photos. It's a really cool layout. The fonts are big. It's not like you're reading War and Peace or anything like that. It's a great, great book. Take a look at that, and that'll explain it more. But right here, sitting in this room, how many of you think Callaway is a love mark? You don't have to put your hands up. You can if you want. How many would think Titleist is a love mark? How many would think TaylorMade? I've got to update this now. <laughs> There's one company there, and it's not this one, but I don't have a very good feeling about it because how they screwed me back in November 1997. Exactly what happened is this, because I won't forget it, so it's still in me. <laughs> yeah, we could go, I could go off a tangent for 10 minutes talking about that, but everybody in here might have different ideas on which company is a love mark. What, what golf facility in this area is a love mark? Which one of you sitting here do your fellow PGA members in this section think of as a love mark? It goes all over the place. What shoe wear, what, what, what teacher? I mean, we've had teachers and all of a sudden skyrocket up and maybe they might have been a bit of in the fat, in the fat area. They didn't have the staying power, maybe they had to, they were all about the what and how. Could be. But if you're, take a look at this book, if you dive into how to create yourself to be a love mark at the facility, that's, that's job security right there. We just took the, the ping as one example, and it's just an example, and, and watch how we do this, but ping aspired, I don't know if Karsten wanted to use the word love mark, I'm not saying he did whatsoever, but Karsten said, and then the ping, they felt, hey, people deserve club fit. The best players at the time get club fit. The average golfer, they should be club fit. They deserve that. And so, they're th and I'm not, I mean, we're in the business. We know that they, they, they didn't think about over the top being business, or the, uh, the biggest, they were quality. I remember my, my dad's golf shop, and you're up here, it's the Northeast. 
members coming in right after Labor Day ordering ping irons. By the time they're going to come in, they're in the winter. And they're, my dad wasn't discounting them. I mean, it was a great thing. Quality product, you can get the, the top price. It was unbelievable. This, does anybody remember this spending card? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This, this is fun when, it's a true story, when, like the Shans and the young assistants, when Peter Harrity, my dad's ping rep, came in and said to my dad and I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you this, this fitting chart. So stand over here and get your shoulders relaxed and just let your hand go down and then your fingertip is the color code type of thing. So it took about 23 seconds. And then the next morning, true story, Mr. Jack Weinbaum, one of my dad's members walks in. He'd been looking at some irons. He says, uh, I said, Mr. Weinbaum, no, we just got this new fitting system. Did I just say system? Yeah, fitting system <laughs> with this pain. Come on over here, relax your shoulders, put your hand down. You're red. And he goes, Bobby, how do you know this stuff? Like, how do you just, <laughs> amazing, amazing. Like just, what talent to fit something. <laughs> I've been trained, Mr. Weinbaum. You know. I might dramatize that just a skosh, but and now what do we do? But the essence of this story, I just love that because it's personal to me. But Mr. Weinbaum ended up buying some pings. But the, the ping, ping company, the ping, how they try to position themselves, it really in essence was this love mark area. It wasn't all about the price. It wasn't about the fad. Although when it came out, I remember, I don't even remember really, well, that's weird looking. That makes a weird sound. But they, you know, and they've done a wonderful job in helping the PGA members and, and people with our appointment book and things like that. So just one example, I mean, I'm up in the Northeast, I should probably switch to the title list at times too, uh, with all the things they've done. But in, in the golf circles, different companies have gravitated to Love Mark, others have been fat. If they're a brand and the sales rep comes in your office or in your shop, you're not, not probably going to buy something. Does anybody remember that big story? It's, I think of club fitting these days. And pretty interesting. I remember when the Hogan Company couldn't give up with the edge. That was an interesting thing where then people just said, screw it. I was working with Tony Roscoe at Western Golf Club and just couldn't get enough Hogan Edge. I just couldn't. And then you're like, oh, forget about it. That was interesting. Anyways, uh, our current professional leader, Kerry, he's, I've got to know Kerry over the years, great guy. He does everything possible, certainly, to aspire to be the love of his facility so that he can write his own ticket that phrase, or he has job security, he can create his own destiny. He has an interesting thing he told me with his sales reps. When his reps come in and they they're selling them something, he says, well, how does this item help me create an emotional connection with my members? I never thought of that. I was, I was into quality. I was into the buttons and, you know, I get 2%, 10 to 30, or, you know, I'll take a discount. But Carrie's thing is, let's see, this item, not bad, but if Mr. Crow comes in to my shop, will this help my emotional connection with him? It's just interesting. <clears throat> just like to throw that out. So Kerry did some things on his own with his staff. We had a DCP regional there so I could see it in action last September. And it's some really, really neat things that he'll do that he probably does some things. You do things he doesn't do. I mean, we're all learning to get better. But he has this mentality of this love mark, I love, I respect his facility. So the more you get there, the more you get that job security. So no matter company, individual, did you see yourself right here? If you did a, a wicked, a wicked intensive heart to heart with yourself, do you feel you're at your facility and you're just a, a product? You're just a brand? Are you doing the things, and we'll, we'll talk about some of these as we go forward today, but 
as we we dive into this and you look back and go oh i show up for work every day and i'm there five minutes early and five minutes late and but is it more than that is it more than just showing up is it doing everything you can to talk about engagement but emotional connections do you have your why love how leo worded it is purpose in life and getting there and is he showing it do people will see it or did what you write down earlier not match what you actually do day in and day out so there's a disconnect there <clears throat> seems like I should write this because it sounds good that's a movie and it's a feel good but actually I act this way and then you end up being a product brand I can get a guy cheaper I can say that in Chicago, New York, New York, right? I got a guy. <laughs> I got a guy. Is that saying again? It occurred to me recently if we change <coughs> the words a little bit, and it was a facility. Are they hiring not on what you do, but they're hiring on why you do it? And you could look at this a lot of different ways. Just interesting. So I do apologize. I don't read everything, as you can see off the screen. Oh, I see you want me to. OK. <laughs> People buy the why, not the what. Distance, not drivers, improvement. Not, you can read, right? Usually, I, some people laugh at that. They kind of get it. Tough audience at times. <laughs> focus on it. Yeah, it's those Met guys. I heard about this when everybody said, "Bob, are you going to the Met section?" I said, "Yeah, the my people. I grew up. I was born here." <laughs> no, but this, you, when you get this PowerPoint, we have these recap slides at the end of every section with some action items. So at the very least, I mean, it's a lot of slides, a lot of information. Sit with your team. I'm not saying that you might recreate this whole day. If you can, great. I'll help you. I'll get on the phone. We'll do a speed. Whatever we can do. Whatever I can do. But there's action items here that can help you at, at these at the end of these recap things. So again, that this one was that, that top line. Just having some fun, but but that's true. And it gets back to you. Are you selling just a driver with all the? But are you adding more distance and happiness to somebody's life? Are you selling a lesson? Or it was a leader with somebody about? The Sweden study. People that play golf, they live longer, happier, better marriage. I mean, so as far as that section right there, that, that's our biggest media section. Any comments in general? Or thoughts, Chair James? Yeah, I think you know with the programs that we have at, at at my facility, that the growth that we're seeing with this kind of mentality is off the charts. And that, like our junior programs, obviously. People know about the junior programs that we have, and the why for us, basically, or the why for me at least, is that I know what you're looking for as a parent. You want your your child to be this. You want your child to be better two hours from now. Not necessarily a better golfer, but just a better person. And so, the parents kind of see he gets it. He he knows he knows what I talk about conversations at the dinner table. Hey, this is something you can, oh, I know, I know, as soon as the kid gets in the car and you say, how'd it go? Okay. What'd you do? What'd you do? Hit balls. And I try to turn that around for them and say, there should be a conversation in the car or at the dinner table. And the parents, yep, yep. So one of the things that I've done is when the parents are there to pick the kids up, or when they're there to drop them off, they say, you want them back in two weeks, right? Ha, ha, ha. And when they come, whatever, an hour and a half later, and they're picking them up, the parents have to be there. Because what I'm saying is, all right, kids, what did we work on today? What did we do? Steve, what do we do? John, what do we do? Bob, what do we do? Okay, and then the parents and I, and I turn to the parents and I say to them, this is what you have to do. Now go home. And there's conversation going on. And so the great thing about it is like we were talking about pricing. Half of my students don't know how much I charge, or they don't remember, rather. You, you, oh, 
Time. For, you have my card, right? You have my card info? Okay. How much is it? Okay. Or sometimes parents will come up to me, you know you didn't charge me last month. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Oh, I went inside to the shop and they were char they, I think they charged me too little. Could you just double check on that? That's always good. <laughs> so that's to me is a sign that they're getting what they want. Like we were saying in the break, the other the people that leave is I think that the mistake was is that it became focused on the what instead of I didn't I didn't provide or we didn't provide that service. And it's the same with with adult programs. We stopped putting up signs there about like, congratulations to Julie, her third win in the Met PGA. We started putting up signs of, congratulations Julie, you played in your first tournament ever. Right? Or, yeah. congratulations, you played your first round with Dad this past weekend. So it's the same accolade. Yeah. You just won a tournament, or you just played your first round. That's a great one for you. That's really good. Everybody doing okay? I mean, a little bit different type of angle like this player development. Any other thoughts or comments or? <coughs> Are you okay? Still feeling the effects of the Jets last night? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't care. Um, we're going to stop for lunch a little bit. Um, I try to stop right about noon. Um, this next section, I was actually part of the team that put together this book. It's down at headquarters. It's on PGI.org. It's terrific. It's fantastic. This is a not a deep dive, but uh, again, it's an, another another building block of help your business. And, and I really way I, I teach when I'm out there, but it's a lot of repetition. It's the why, the love mark, building the emotional connection, and now how you take in that to know your consumer better, know your member, your, your private club, interchangeable, things like that. <coughs> There's lots of different facilities. We know that. There's lots of different people you teach. There's Oh, young. It, do you do you know as much as you can about them that that is helping your business, or do you just sit back and it's not as proactive? So this section, some ideas as far as how you can learn more from the customer and incorporate the why, the love mark, and build on emotional connections. You get a lot of facilities. You get a lot of different people that come in. You know, people know. Golf cuts across all demographics. You get older, younger, you get a lot of families. Finding a lot of facilities building their business on family golf. Big time. That was personally what I did a lot was use family golf to build my business. You got couples out there. Uh, you got different outings that might come into your facility. See if you're paying attention. <laughs> um, lots of women. I, there was just something recently about uh, some newer data that certainly suggests, or more than suggests, as far as what still is out there for women uh, to drive the economy in golf. So can't forget about them. Uh, if you brought a private club, hey, we can't have a workshop without a caddy shack, right? <laughs> Trying to see if you're, you know, paying attention. There's no test at the end of the day. Um, but you know, you got your classic golf guys that everybody strives for that middle aged white guy, but again, women, families, kids, there's so much revenue and business out there in the non traditional. And these guys, yeah, they can bring in some business, but sometimes that demographic, that middle aged white guy, is not playing a whole lot. I'm not saying a sweeping generalization, but just as every middle-aged white guy that walks in, oh, I gotta get them back. Well, yeah, but don't forget about the other business opportunities that are out there. Because there's other wise guys that you might wanna get some business on. John, right? And don't forget about the kids, because they, they do bring in a lot of business. <laughs> 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 
Uh, then you got hardcore guys, and then finally, <coughs> your traditionalists. That you don't want to forget about the traditional golfers that always play by the rules and stickler for dress code and things like that. There's actually a wicked funny Three Stooges short. I think it's about five minutes. I think it's called The Three Little Bears. They go to a golf facility. And I have it loaded in, but it's just tough to play so many videos every day. But it, I watched this. I don't remember watching it ever, but I watch it in the context of what I do now. And it hits me that they are trying to fit in. It's so funny. It's hilarious. But they're simply trying to fit in. I looked at it. Yeah, they're trying to do everything they can to fit in because that's the, the mores and what you're supposed to do in golf. And you, you just gotta watch it. Maybe I should play it, but it's it, it's funny, but it opens a lot of eyes back to even when they did that short. So uh, in your handouts, you should see this survey here. Maybe halfway through. not like family feud type of thing, but we, it was a survey, and it's about 33,000 people, a blend of old, young, good golf, not so good golf, beginner, men, women. It's, it's a nice compilation percentage-wise of really what the golf landscape looks like demographically. So they, the, the survey here was to, this, to these people, what do you care about when you're thinking about going to play golf. So that's that was the question to this 33,000 people days and weeks before they were gonna tee it up. So days and weeks before I'm gonna play with Michael and Steve and Bob, we're gonna come back to play Nolwood in another week. What are we thinking about anticipating to go play golf? So our question is, what do you think they care about? What do you, what do you think the top three on this survey that people cared about leading up to playing golf. Just shout out weather. Weather. I said I said uh, length of round when I did this. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Fun with friends. Fun, fun with friends. Fun with friends. Fun with friends. Yeah. More good yeah. shots, less bad shots. More good shots. Anything else? Three by one. <coughs> Probably good course conditions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my my three would be good course conditions, length of round, and have fun with friends. I did a, a teaser when we first started these, and it was cool to get to this, and then I moved on, and everybody, well, what were the results? I said, oh, you got to get on the workshop to find out. <laughs> so I made it out okay, no, no bodily injury. So here's, here's the kicker, the survey results about what, again, 33,000, it's not 25 million, but I think it's a, it's a good template. And we saw this survey and it, yeah, it fit in with our mindset about this player development workshop and the expertise PGA members have, how to grow the game, rounds and revenue. So in anticipation of playing golf, a survey not after the round, but before you're even stepping out to the golf course, the top three, more good shots, low score, have fun. And this is gender, uh, Rick Gender? Yep. You know, you think there'll be two different results entirely if you have to do this or Truth be told, the more women had two and three flip. But the exact same top three, men and women. Wow. <laughs> so, I didn't do well on this when I did my, when we, first did this and you know one of the guys on our team had this we talked it through and we said you know this is a, a valuable this is valuable on two counts one I did a lot of surveys to my customers and members but I mean 99% of the time was after the fact and I just been beating myself up over this the last 18 months two years working on this workshop it's like why didn't I think about do more proactive, what is somebody, what are they thinking about? I'm in golf, so I guess I'm working smart. So I think I know what people are thinking. 
Maybe not so. So if you're not doing any kind of survey before, whatever it is, think about doing more of that. Because I was with many of you probably that I thought it was really good surveys. I got a lot of good information, and I did, but it was always after the round. And sometimes somebody just played bad, and they just trashed us. Like, well, the, the dude you played with said things were great, but you shot 100 million, and everything sucks. So I didn't learn much in that regard. But so it's just interesting. And it does get to where you have a good round. And again, it's the, it's the idea after you're staying in a, after I fly Delta, after I stay at the Hampton Inns and I get those, those surveys. Yeah, I mean, it's human nature probably. I was coming up from West Palm to Atlanta yesterday. The aisles here, I'm in the aisle. A little nine-year-old girl right here throws up. Just vomits over everything. <laughs> yeah, the flight attendant comes in and they start pouring coffee grounds. Star Starbucks is a dried coffee grounds. They make coffee on the airplane. So they pour it all over there. And I'm sitting in the aisle. The guy's got his bag of Starbucks coffee grounds. And he reaches up because the lady needed something out of the overhand and it was right above me. <coughs> I got completely and utterly doused with dry coffee grounds. So there, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, probably makes sense. I'm all, it covered my whole. Makes total sense. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> work. I'm taking you outside. <laughs> so just, you know, I get covered and hey, you know, it was kind of neat not to get on that soap opera thing again, but you know, I stand up, I brush off, and I've got probably 12 people right around there looking like. <laughs> and I just said, hey, if that's the worst thing that happens to me today, I'm doing okay. That's you. you know, I mean, it's like perspective, so it doesn't mean I'm gonna hammer um, Delta because I got rained with drive cop. Last night, I, like, you can smell it in my shirt, it was there, yeah, whatever. It's like hitting a bunker shot, it's in the wind. Getting sugar <laughs> cookie. <laughs> Getting sugar cookie. Yeah. The lawyer found you and gave you his card. Uh, no. no. So, but you know, stuff happens after the fact, and you're like, oh, they, they stink. Now, the lady over there was complaining because they didn't have a barf bag. She was really upset because her, her kid just went everywhere. I'm glad I wasn't in that aisle. The guy on the window was mortified. <laughs> He's probably going to hammer Delta. But the idea is after the round, you <coughs> never know. So. Try to strive to get out there to do a survey beforehand. Learn more about what you can. And here's my slide. I talked about earlier, you brilliant ESP. People are in a great experience is we sell the tea time. <coughs> I'm not putting anybody on the bus. There's some fabulous, fabulous, amazing facilities and PJ members that do sell great experiences, but by and large as an industry, it's, it could be some improvements out there for sure. I won't mention that tea time provider that a lot of PJ members are really getting in the weeds with lately. I know it's a little bit small, you, when you get this you can you can read it, maybe I should put this in the handouts, but I look at this, two things. Um, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy or needs, then think you get that and it works out there, right? But at the facility level, what are, what are the basics that, that need to be covered? And do we as PGA members absolutely need to be right on top with our thumb on it? Or can we train, delegate appropriately, and keep an eye on it? But back to my earlier comments, how do we drive revenue? What are the expertise, what are the talents we have as PGA members to absolutely drive revenue, drive the business, and nobody can do it, nobody can do it like a PGA member. Nobody can do it like us. I looked at this as a time management slide. That was how I looked at this. Remember when I said before I had the, hey Steve, nice to meet you. What kind of things I do every day? Am I running around just in quicksand many days, not really pushing forward my business the way I should, just because I want to do everything and I want to be everywhere? Or are some things in this, this pyramid that it really doesn't need a PGA member 
to be mired in the weeds every moment of every day. And we're able to stay where that survey, if this survey rel relates to right here, and people look forward to playing and will drive more business if we focus on that top, better shots, lower score, us teaching, teaching and playing, playing and teaching. In Kentucky, they say teaching and playing, or we just play, teach, play, 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 teach, whatever. All y'all are getting it, which I'm really, really impressed with. In Texas, they told me I could say wicked y'all. <laughs> I got the okay down there for that. So, greeted courteously, clean working facilities, course condition, pace of play. Uh, greeted by name, made it feel warm. I mean, those are important. But is that customer service? Is that just you open your doors as a business? And there's some things that people, hey, I expect that to walk into our facility. And do you as the PGA member have to be greeting everybody at the front door because that's what you do best? Hey, there's some people, I had a guy that covered most of the United States for TW, TWA on customer service work for me at River Run in Ocean City. He blew me away on something. I learned so much from that guy. I just named Jack Bauer too. It's not, not the one you think. <laughs> I said, Jack, man, you're gonna just lead our, our team in this area. I'm going to get out of your way, and you just run it. I didn't know or see some of this, but you just try to figure things out as you go. And when I went to PGA Village, trying to figure out who, who, who can I rely on with 300 people in multiple locations and so on and so forth, that I can't physically be everywhere at every moment. So where do I have to be to maximize what I'm doing to drive the revenue, add value to the facility? So when you get this slide, maybe you can self-evaluate what you're doing every day and use that as a time management tool for yourself. I'm not to pick on Jake, but he's into a newer role in player development. And if, if I think of Jake as that director of instruction, Michael at Pine Hills, who's vacuuming the carpet on a drop-dead gorgeous midday in September. But that's that old mentality, Bob, about so I got to be down here. Listen, I vacuumed the two most important items in my facility were the sweepy thing, and I always called it the sweepy thing, and the vacuum. I bought really good vacuums. Like, I spent more than I probably should on, on vacuums, but I said, I don't need a big budget to be clean. I don't need a big budget for my team to pick up every little thing. Like, I was anal on cleanliness. Unbelievable great vacuum, and I had like 15 of these sweeping things. Everybody, you know, everybody had a sweeping thing going on. <laughs> so it had to be clean, because then if you see a little piece of paper, it stands out. The whole place is messy, yeah. So anyways, I mean, just getting everybody on the same page, and I could free myself up from that. I literally called it the sweeping thing. <laughs> that's a sci I don't know, scientific name, or that's what I called it. The what? Trademark. 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 Yeah. Okay, we're right up above. Right up at let's twelve on one now. I try to stay right on time here. Uh, I think it's a good time to break. I'm going to leave the slide if people want to walk up here and take a look at it. Um, with a smaller audience, and yeah, I want to make sure we we've got some things coming up in the afternoon. We we do breakout sessions at your table. You can be talking amongst yourself. So if we could. You know, good half hour, 35, 40 minutes for lunch. Um, then we can just keep moving if that's okay with everybody. Cool. All right.